In this video, I'm going to show you how you can install React Native Maps in iOS and how you can get a location and display your location using a marker. And I'm also going to be talking about all the performance issue I had using the iOS simulator and Apple Maps and also Google Maps inside of iOS. So, and I'm going to be talking about how I circumvented these issues, of course, and how you can sort of get by. Now, thankfully, it's pretty easy to install React Native Maps on iOS compared to the Android version, which I showed in another video, although it's not that difficult, it's a little more manual. At least if you decide to stick with the Apple Maps implementation. If you want to use the Google Maps implementation, you have to start using something like Cocoa Pops and start doing a little more manual work. But I've tested out both Apple Maps and Google Maps on the iOS simulator and they both seem to have roughly the same performance. So for now, I don't see any uh, initiative to switch over to Apple Maps. So that's what we're going to be using in this tutorial is just Apple Maps. Now let's start out our first project. So most of you who are familiar with React Native would probably know this. So I just go React Native init and I say Maps app. Once we're in here, I'm going to go ahead and say git init. So I initialize git to make some sort of cards, <laughs> make some sort of source code control, version control. And this might be in handy later on when you're sitting and developing, especially um, when I'm going to show you how we avoid messing up the Android version of the app later on when we do React Native Link. I'll show you later on. For now, just be nice and use git init to initialize git for me. <laughs> that will make me happy. Now, I should open the project inside of my Visual Studio Code as well. So we have Maps app. There we go. And we see lots of changes here. That's okay. Initial commit, I will just say. Now, um, there's no, yeah. Always want to stage my changes for commit. That's okay. Now, and the reason I'm using commit or git is because later on when we do a command inside React Native to use React Native Maps, we are kind of messing up the Android version of the React Native app. So we need to revert some changes so we don't do that. Um, more about that later. Now, let's try and get React Native Maps installed. So I go inside of my terminal. And in here, I will do yarn at React Native Maps. And there we go. Now the maps has downloaded. And well, if you go and say command R, well, it's not going to do anything because I haven't started using React Native Maps yet. Now let me just remove this flow thing up here in comment. Now let's also remove this type props here and here like so, it's a basic standard project I always start with. And now let's import the map view from React Native Maps, like that. And then we need to render a map with a initial region. So I basically just copy from the um, the installation instructions of React Native Maps. And I just copied this in here. So this is a map view with a initial region. So that's how big the map is going to be. Latitude and longitude is the position and the deltas here are sort of how wide of an area you want. And at least that's my understanding of it. Anyway, um, 
Also, we'll delete the instructions up here because we're not going to use that. And then let's try and say command R. And now we get this uh, violation here, require native component air map, which was not found in UI manager. What this means is that we haven't been doing the bindings or the native bindings of this React Native Maps. We don't have any sort of link to the native elements. Um, what we basically need to do is we need to run React Native link, and that's going to save the uh, do the linking. Now, first, before I do that, I will just do a commit uh, clean up plus edit React Native Maps and Map View. So there we go, React Native Link. So now it says uh, linking React Native Maps iOS dependency and React Native Maps Android dependency. And here's the thing that we don't want. So this P BX proj is the iOS part of it. The Java part we see here is for Android. Basically, you can almost read it from the changes. It says Android, Android, Android. So we just go and revert this change here. This one, that one, this one. Because I guarantee you, if you try to load this up on Android, it's not going to work because uh, it's just broken. React Native Link doesn't work on Android. I have another video showing you guys how to do it on Android instead. So go look at that and do that. Now, but we should be good to go on the iOS version now, except we see that it doesn't work. And why doesn't it work? Well, because we sort of need to close the bundler all the way down. And then we need to run React Native run iOS again from the beginning. Perhaps we even need to uh, uninstall the app or something. I don't know, but I think it's going to work um, just this way. Okay, so now the app has started up again. I rebuilt it using React Native run iOS, but I just got this blank white screen. Not much is going on here. So why is that? Well, I read up on the React Native Maps GitHub and they pointed out to some styling you had to set. Well, basically I can just copy the, uh, the styling suggestion they have over here. So I'm just going to copy the map view and map view here like this and copy the styles as well. Let's copy that. And um, I need to remove this one because we're not using Google. So remove that with the provider, provider Google, because we're just using Apple Maps. And if we refresh, ta-da, we get the maps up here. Of course, they are only filling half of the screen because we have a height and width set here. So if you want to not make the maps fill the whole screen, you can use these options. But if you want to have it fill the whole screen, you can just remove this. And also you can remove the justify content and align items properties. So if you refresh again, we get the full maps here, which is filling the whole screen. And there we go. Now, you might notice that it is pretty slow. It's pretty slow. It's kind of sluggish <laughs> to say the least. I mean, perhaps you can use it, perhaps not, but I think it is pretty horrible to work with. And I will talk more about how I sort of circumvented that in the next section. Now, before I made this video, I had a little Mac mini on 2.5 gigahertz i5 and I had a Intel HD 4000 like integrated graphics card and I was thinking okay the Mac I have is too slow for this simulator um, it's not even responding to my mouse right now and I went out and I got a new computer instead so now I have 
this uh, 3.4 gigahertz i5, 8 gigs of RAM, uh, NVIDIA GeForce GT 1030, 2 gigabyte, uh, 2 gigs, and it's still the same. It's still crappy. It's still the same crappy experience. And um, I've tried lots of various things. And on the Android emulator, Maps is pretty smooth. It's a pretty nice experience on the same machine I'm running inside of Mac. The Android emulator, it's super smooth. Now, I googled a bit about this issue and there seems to be a lot of people in 2017 who is arguing about this issue and talking about the newest update, making the maps performance slow on their simulator. And, but we're in 2018 December now. So I don't think there's like going to come an update from Apple anytime soon that is going to fix this. Perhaps the performance will be better if I'm on a AMD card, which Apple seems to use in their newer systems, like a RX 560 or something. However, I don't want to spend more money on a new card or get a new card or something like that. I have two solutions to this problem. If you have the same performance problem that I have is one, you can go out and you can use a real iPhone develop on a real iPhone, have it plugged in by USB or use Wi-Fi, whatever, and deploy to that, develop using a real device, basically. So you skip the emulation part totally. The number two solution is to use another device instead. So here you can see the different iPhone iOS simulators models I have loaded up. Here's the iPhone 10 on 12.1 iOS. And as you can see, it's really horrible. It's so sluggish and it's basically unusable. On the next side, we have the iPhone 6 on 12.1 iOS as well. And you can see that it's a little better, but it's not like totally smooth as we had inside of the Android Google Maps emul uh, emulator. And to the next side, we have the iPhone 5 on iOS 10.3. And you can see it's a lot better. It's quite smooth. So obviously it's an issue if you go and use a very old version of iOS to develop your apps on. If you do choose to use this old version, you have to make sure that it, your app is also working on the newest 12.1 version. All right, everyone. Now we are going to see how we can put in a marker for our location inside of the map and of course get the iPhone's location. So just like in Android, there's a global navigator object that we can use to get the location. If you go inside of the component that mount lifecycle function and go here, navigator and say geolocation and say get current position and we get this position object. And now inside this position object, we can set our state with the latitude and longitude. So latitude, this um, score it position, dot chords latitude and longitude position chords longitude and then we can also say we can set an error object also in case there's an error and now in case there's an error we have a, a callback we can do here so we can set a state with an error. Like that, error.message. So this is the error callback and we then can set the state of the error object to be the error message. Okay, so there's another option we can set. There are some um, options on this get position we can set. So we can set a 
enable high accuracy to true. We can also set a timeout in milliseconds. We can also set a maximum age for the, uh, the position. And basically we can just start using the position now. Now I'm also going to write, write a constructor. And inside this constructor, I will set the state just to default to zero and zero and the error I set to null also. And then we need to import a marker from React Native Maps and then we can just need to change this one up so we can put an element inside here, a marker element. And let's see, just like that. We write coordinate and we can just say this.state. And it's going to get the latitude and longitude properties from our state. Now let's try and see how it works out. So we get this allow permission uh, by default when you use React Native in it on a iOS app, there is already allowing the position. So there's no need to edit any config files or something like that. So it's actually getting the position now, but we're not using it. And well, we're not seeing it. Excuse me. If I go out a bit, let's see if you can see it. There it is over there. So that's the, our iPhone position we see right displayed here. Um, we started out at another position that's hard coded here, but you can also set the position to be hard coded with the latitude and longitude. Obviously in a production type of application, you would have some sort of uh, check if the properties are uh, null or zero or something like that and maybe display an error message but in this simple example we're just putting in the state like it is and if I refresh I can see the marker is right in the middle here and that's our location so that's how you get the location inside of a React Native iOS app and display the marker using React Native Maps